All right, Paul. I've just spent another day looking for that silver lining you've been talking about. And it sure ain't there. Last ten heads we had busted through the fence and they headed for the Ponderosa. I can't say as I blame them. If you're thirsty enough to do the same thing. Well, how long are you going to hang on to this wind-blown rock pile you call a ranch? I'm sick of it. There's 3,600 acres of land here, son. It's a big stake and it's worth fighting for. I've been trying to hold on to it for you. Your pa's right. Land's everything, Harry. You got land, you got everything. Oh, yeah, it's sure everything, ain't it? Ten years you've been forming on this ranch. What have you got to show for it? You got six months' wages you ain't never gonna get, that's what. Now, hold on a minute, Harry. Maybe he's right, Ed. We still gotta eat. We gotta water the horses. You get some barrels, hitch up a team. We're headed over to the Ponderosa. Ponderosa? So it's the Ponderosa, ain't it? Great cart rides. Crawl to them on your belly. Beg them for a cup of water. Now, Harry, you know that ain't so. Ben Cartwright's always been a mighty good friend to us. Well, there's water in town, and I'd a whole lot sooner get it there than go crawl into the Cartwrights. Don't pay him no mind, Matt. He's young. Always was quick-tempered, fiery. <laughs> More like his mother was, and, and he is like you. Besides, he, he just don't feel toward land the way you and I do. Sure. Thank you for standing by me, Ed. It's gonna work out all right, Matt. No. No, it won't. This land's going to be sold for taxes. I ain't got the money to pay them. Get the water, Harry. I got a few things to attend to. Uh, why don't you go over and get yourself a couple of beers? Cool down a bit. Yeah, maybe you're right. Ed, I know I shouldn't have yelled at Pa that way. Well, I figure he understands all right. Go on, relax. Yeah. See you later. Everybody's taxes went up, but nobody's told me why. Most of government went up, Mrs. Whitener. We had to build a new school, and the salary for the school teacher went up, too. Well, my salary didn't go up, young lady. I just don't know what the country's coming to with these high prices and high taxes. Well, you can file a written protest to the assessor if you like, Mrs. Whitener. A lot of good that'll do. Well, I may decide just not to pay those taxes. Oh! Millie? Hello, Ed. Two days, it seems like two years. It don't. Somebody's liable to come in any minute. Well, put up your abs and lunch sign. It's that time, ain't it? Yes, it's about that time. Millie, you don't know how I hate being away from you like this. All right, I've tried to be kind about this, but you don't want to listen oh, to what now, I'm saying. Oh, don't start all that talk about you and me being all over with, because I ain't going to listen to it. Well, you better listen to it, because it's so. And it's not that I've got anything against you. It's just that... Just that what? And look at me. 
I'm not getting any younger. Do you think I like it here, working for wages? I want things nice, Ed. Can't you understand that? I want things nice. Things are going to be nice, Millie, if you just listen to me. Listen to you? I've been listening to you too long, Ed. I've been listening to your promises, and the next time I listen to a man, it's going to be a man who can pay his way, not some so-called foreman who isn't even being paid his wages. I ain't going to be a foreman who ain't paid his wages. That's all over with. I got a plan, Millie. A big plan for you and me. Oh, another plan. Well, is it going to be like that plan of the silver mine that was worthless? Or like that Spanish Don in California that really turned out to be a Mexican gambler? One no, I no. Ever Listen talk... to me, Millie. How would you like to be the wife of a rancher? A big rancher with 3,600 acres all his own. I'd like it fine. What 3,600 acres? The Jeffers Ranch. It's going for taxes, ain't it? Mm-hmm. $637. And I've got it. I've been scrimping and saving all my life, and I've got it. Millie, I'll give it to you, every cent of it. And before anybody can move, you pay off those taxes, and that ranch will be ours, yours and mine. You're never going to change, are you, Ed? Another one of your big deals. So we're going to wind up with the Jeffers Ranch, are we? Mm -hmm. All 3,600 acres of land that's run out of water. Everybody thinks it's run out of water, but I know better. What do you mean? You know that little green meadow up in the north end of the Jeffers Ranch? Everybody thinks it's fed by a small spring from the Ponderos. You remember I took a trip about eight months ago? Yes, I remember. Well, I didn't take that trip for fun. I went to see a geologist. I told him about that green meadow, and he took out a contour map, and he figured out where there was a possibility of an underground river, and he showed me on the map where to look for it. Millie, there's enough water for a ranch twice the size of the Jeffers Ranch, just where that dude told me to look for it. Well, how do you know, I mean, if it's underground? Well, that's the beauty of it. I know about it, but nobody else does. I drove a thin iron rod into the ground just where the geologist told me to. And all of a sudden, there was no resistance. And I put my ear to that rod, and Millie, Millie, I could hear the water rushing by like I was standing on the bank of a river. I've never breathed a word of this to a soul till right now. Millie, I'm going to be a rich man. Well, why don't you stop talking and kiss me? Hey, Bruno, how you doing? Hello, Joe. How are you? Good. How about getting me a beer, huh? Fifty-dollar bill. The smallest you've got, little Joe? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just did some banking for Paul. That's the smallest I got. Oh. I'll have to get some change. Okay, sorry about that. Fifty-dollar bill. Is that for my benefit? Hey, Harry, sorry. I didn't see you sitting there. You saw me. You just wanted to make the big entrance. Come on, finish up. I'll buy you a drink. Yeah, you'll buy me another one. Money buys anything, don't it? What's the matter? What's eating on you? What's eating me? You, that's what. You and your smugness, and your land, and your water, and your cattle, and your $50 bills. You've been thrown in my face since the day I was born, and I hate your guts. Let's just say you had too much to drink, Harry, and we'll forget it, all right? I'm not asking you to forget anything, Joe Cartwright. Come on, let's forget it. Forget it and have a drink. Hold it, Cartwright. I'll handle this. Go on. Thank you, Charlie. Sorry about the mess, Bruno. I'll cover it. Joe Cartwright. So help me, one of these days I'll kill him. Come on. Let's get that water and get home. Tables and chairs, will you, fellas? Now 
I'll get it out. Hello, Matt. Come on in. Good to see you. How are you, Ben? Stop singing. You're busy? Yes, I am. Doing the bookkeeping. And if there's anything I can't stand, it's doing books, and I'm happy as can be that you came in and interrupted. I can't stand bookkeeping work either. Matter of fact, the only kind of work I can stand is that can be done on the back of a horse. Yeah, Miss Dude. Now sit down, have some coffee. Thank you, Hubert. Thank you, Noah. Yeah, I was going over these books here, you know. I just figured something out. That the price of everything went up last year. The price of oats went up two cents. Ben, I might as well meet this straight on. I'm going to lose the ranch. Yeah, I figured something was, was in the wind. I tell you, man, I was uh, thinking maybe I should come around and see you, but a lot of fellas just can't go barging into a neighbor's business without being invited. And what took you so long? I don't know. Maybe I believed in miracles. Well, this, uh, all this book work has made me thirsty. I'm going to have a brandy. How about you? Join me? <laughs> you know what I just figured out? The last time I had brandy, daytime, was the last time I did the books. Good thing I'm not a bookkeeper. Ben. Kind of hard to ask. If you let me have five thousand dollars, I'll pay the back taxes. And the ranch is yours, lock, stock, and barrel. Well, uh, Matt, that ranch of yours is worth. A lot more than five thousand dollars. A whole lot more. If I don't pay the taxes, somebody will just pick it up for next to nothing. No. No, I don't think so. No, sir. No, nobody's going to pick up that rent of yours for the tax money, and I'm not going to buy it. All that that ranch needs is a little money and a little water. Just so happens that I've run out of both. This one, Matt. Come on over here. Now, what's the best source of water in this part of the territory? I don't see what difference that makes. Ponderosa, best source of water in this part of the territory, right? Now, how long do you think it would take to... I don't... Wait a minute now. How long do you think it would take to run an irrigation channel from the Ponderosa over to your place? Week? No more than ten days. This is kind of hard to say, Ben, but you'll understand having boys of your own. With water, Harry would see a real working ranch. And when I think he'd turn out to be just like little Joe, which is something I've wanted all along. Well, now, I take that as a compliment for little Joe and for myself. But first things first. Now, we're going to get you alone so you can... Pay the taxes, and then we're going to collect some people and the right kind of equipment, and we're going to run that irrigation channel right over to your place and get some water for you. Friend. Friend. Your handshake is good, and I thank you for knowing that mine is too. But I'd like this all legal and, you know, papers drawn up and all. Well, if you wanted legal papers drawn up and all, you just go ahead and draw up the papers and send them over to me and I'll sign them. Now, drink up. How does a man say thanks? Matt, I had to punch you right in the nose for not coming to me six months ago. Thank you. Mr. Jeffers, can I help you? You sure can, Millie. I'm missing a foreman. I figured I might find him around here. Oh, Mr. Jeffers, I haven't seen Ed since noon. Well, that's quite a while for you two to be apart. 
Would you get out my tax bill? Do you want to pay it, Mr. Jeffers? Oh, you're doggone right I do. And that ain't the half of it. Ben Cartwright's gonna run water over to my place. I'm gonna be able to restock. Millie, that foreman of mine is gonna be a mighty good catch for you yet. We're gonna have a small-sized ponderosa out there. Well, this is a surprise. I'm very happy for you, Mr. Jeffers. Well, thank you, Millie. And you know what? I'm gonna rebuild that foreman shack into a nice little house, just in case some couple might want to live in it. Nellie, I thought this day had never end. Oh, well, neither did I. Millie, honey, what's the matter? Millie, honey, what's the matter? You know, today for a minute you really had me convinced. Oh, I ought to have better sense than I ever listened to you and your harebrained schemes. Well, what are you talking about? Oh, you and your big plans for taking over the Jeffers place. You and your underground river. Buying the place for taxes, you Well, said. I told you the truth. It's all set. I got the money for the taxes. The taxes have been paid. What? Matt Jeffers came in today with the money. Where'd you get it? Ben Cartwright gave it to him. He didn't. Oh, he sure did. Where does that leave you, Ed? Hmm? Cartwright's going to help him restock and channel water in for him. Well, I can't let that happen. I can't let Ben Cartwright get in my way. How do you plan on stopping him? Cartwright and Jeffers have been friends for a long, long time. There must be a way. If I could drive a wedge between them, I'll do it. I've got to do it. Oh, well, you've got to do it, Ed. Because that's the only way you're going to get me. You sure work hard long time on this map, Mr. Cartwright. How long now before you come to dinner? Well, Joe isn't here yet. The moment he gets here, we'll sit down and eat, all right? Hmm. Well, Paul, we're going to have some difficulty getting all the men we're going to need. I rode all the way down into the Carson Valley, and looks like every man from 8 to 80 has gone to Idaho on that silver strike. What about Phil Ewing? He usually knows what there's some extra men. Oh, he's the first man I went to. It seems like every available hand is over at the Yellow Jack or some of the other mines. Oh, yeah, they're doing that improvement work, aren't they? Hey, Pa, how you doing? Hoss? How you doing, Jim? Here's that payroll money. <sighs> Wish we could hire ourselves some hands to help dig that channel for Matt Jeffers with this payroll money. Yeah, what's all the talk about Matt Jeffers? Well, you know, his ranch is dry as a bone. I promised I'd dig him a channel, get some water over there, but we can't find the man to do it with. Oh, Mr. Jeffers is hung on now for this long. Looks like another couple of days or so. Wouldn't be that important. Well, it may take more than a couple of days. Anyway, it's not only Matt. He's having some problems with his boy, too. I had a few problems with Harry myself today. I had a run-in with him in a saloon. What about? Well, it wasn't about anything. He was feeling kind of low, had a few drinks too many. He took a swing at me, and we got into it. Kind of busted things up a little bit in the bar. Forty dollars short. Fine. Joe, I don't like hearing things about you having fights with anybody, particularly Harry. Well, I don't like getting into him either. I've forgotten about it. I'm sure Harry will, too. Well, how are we going to get this channel, Doug? Paul, oh, I was just thinking. If we're up to date with all of our timber contracts, can we bring some of those crews down here and put them on this project? <laughs> Not a bad idea. Joe? How about you running up there tomorrow and see how things are getting on? Do it first thing in the morning. All right. Everybody better come supper now before last venison roast becomes small like a lamb chop. <laughs> Here we come, Opsy. See if I can't get you deer tomorrow. How's it going? Coming along all right, I guess. 
find any more breaks in the fence, did you? A couple of them. You didn't tell Pa about me and Joe Cartwright getting into that fight, did you? No. I told you I wouldn't. I don't know what it is, Ed. No sense in trying to talk to Pa about it. It just seems as long back as I can remember, you know, he's been saying, well, Joe Cartwright, he wouldn't do it this way, and he wouldn't do it that way. Yeah, I guess your pa does like the Cartwrights, but in view of what just happened, you can't really blame him. Well, it wouldn't make no difference if Ben Cartwright hadn't offered to help. As long as I can remember, when Ben says frog, pa jumps. Well, you gotta admit, Ben's helped him more times than you can count. Well, I almost wish he hadn't offered to help this time. Gotten so sick of this place. I'd like to leave it and never see it again. Oh, that's no way to talk, Harry. The only way a man will amount to something is, a, is to own land. Look at this matter. Prettiest thing you ever seen. Now, of all 3,600 acres, look just like that. But they don't. It's only this little green patch. And even it's watered by the Ponderosa. Yeah, it, uh... It does seem we depend a lot on the Ponderosa, doesn't it? Well, uh, I guess I'd better get back to work. Ed? Yeah? Guess I'd better tell Pa about that fight with Joe, huh? If you don't, somebody will. See you at supper time, huh? Like somebody who's luckier than we were, coaches. Ah, come on. <laughs> Someone shot me. Yeah. yeah, I saw him. It was Joe Cartwright. Joe Cartwright. Joe Cartwright. Take it easy now. I'll get you home. Harry, talk to me. Can you hear me, son? What happened? Who shot you? Joe. Joe Curry. He... I'm sorry, Matt. I did everything I could. Joe Cartwright. I can't believe it. Well, you heard him, Matt. I, I wish I could change it, but, but you heard him. Joe Cartwright would never do a thing like this. 
Well, that's, uh, that's not for us to decide, Doc. I think we ought to let the sheriff do the questioning. He's right, Matt. Will you take care of it, Ed? I can't talk to nobody. Not right now. Sure, Matt. I'll take care of everything. Clem, I didn't even see Harry today. Maybe so. I've got a dying man's statement and three witnesses who heard it. I figured that was enough or I wouldn't have brought you in. I also have your rifle with the shell casing still in the I told case. you I took a shot at a deer. Yeah, you told us. So it took so long, Joe. We just got back to the ranch and heard what had happened. Now, Clem, what is this? Harry for? Jeffers was ambushed. Before he died, he said he was shot by Joe Cartwright. Now, that's ridiculous. Ben... There were three witnesses. They all heard him. He's right, Ben. I was there. All right, Joe, what, what do you say happened? I don't know what happened. I don't know why Harry would say I shot him. I heard Harry, with his last breath, say that Joe Cartwright shot him. All right, Ed, that'll be enough of that. Enough of that? What are you going to do, slap him on his wrist because he's a Cartwright and then tell him not to do it again? You know better than that, Ed. There'll be an inquest and then a trial if it comes to that. Now, you get out of here. An inquest? And Ben here will hire a fancy lawyer that'll twist the jury around until he's a regular hero. Probably get a medal for bushwhacking a 22-year-old kid. Joe, you'll be notified about the hearing, so don't leave the Ponderosa. I'll have to keep the rifle for evidence. Oh, Clem. Even murder's all right when you're a cart ride, ain't it? Joseph. Oh, Ed, I've got to hand it to you. I didn't think you'd go through with it. What are you talking about? Oh, Ed, let's don't play games. You said you'd figure out a way to drive a wedge between Ben Cartwright and Matt Jeffers. Well, you did it. You killed the only thing that meant more to him in that land. You don't believe Joe Cartwright shot him? Oh, of course I don't. He didn't have any reason. Well, it was that big fight over in the saloon. People know Joe Cartwright better than that, Ed. They'll need more reason, too. All right. I'll give you one. It was a hunting accident. Little Joe took a shot at a deer and hit Harry. When he saw Harry was going to die, he just ran off, figuring Harry wouldn't live long enough to say who it was. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. There's no way of proving it, though. Well, it could be. That was Saturday, your day off, remember? Don't you usually rent a buggy and go for a drive? Oh, well, I did rent a buggy. I went for a drive. Then you could have seen the whole thing. Oh, yes, I could. Of course, it's taken a chance. Oh, well, it's also 3,600 acres of rangeland with an underground river. Joe, a lot of people heard about that fight you had with Harry. Not gonna help matters too much. Well, mean anything? Harry lost his temper and we got into it, that's all. Joe, you don't have to explain anything to Paul and me. Now, ask Jeremy Grant to come out to the house, Joey. I think we'd better to talk out here than in his office. He's as good a lawyer as he is in the territory, Joe. Yeah. It's beginning to look like I'm going to need the best lawyer in the territory. Matt, I know how you feel about Ben Cartwright. And Harry knew it, too. But you can't let your feelings blind you to the facts. I just don't believe it, that's all. Ben was trying to help me. Was he? He was going to channel in water to you, wasn't he? Matt, he hasn't turned over one shovel full of dirt. And what's more, he didn't intend to. Ben wouldn't do a thing like that to me. Oh, wouldn't he? Well, look at it this way. 
Suppose you had given him this note. Without that water, you couldn't have made the first payment. And the minute you defaulted, Ben would have your ranch. Don't you see that's how he planned it? But I offered him the whole ranch for $5,000, and he didn't take it. Do you think the great Ben Cartwright is going to let people know that he bought you a ranch for $5,000 when you were down on your knees? Not ever. This way, he could, he could tell people that he tried to help you, but it just didn't work. He can say how, how sad he is about it all, but he'll still have your ranch. I don't know what to think anymore. Why did little Joe kill my son? Well, I don't think that was intentional, Matt. I think Joe shot at a deer and hit Harry. When he found out how bad the boy was hit, he took off. Thought that Harry wouldn't live long enough to, to say who it was. So he didn't have a reason. Figured he could get away with it, being one of the Cartwrights. Joe's one of the best shots in the country. Anybody can miss. He did. As bad as the accident was, the real crime was his running off and leaving Harry like that. If I hadn't come along and found him, I... I know. I'll always be grateful to you for that, Ed. At least the boy died here at home. Home. That's what I wanted most for him. This place is closing in on me. Too many memories. It'll take me a little ride. Sure, Matt. Go ahead, I know how you feel. Joseph, you feel you've told me everything there is to tell? That's all there is. Well, Jimmy, what do you think? I've been your lawyer for a long time, Ben. I know you like complete frankness. There isn't time to do much before the inquest tomorrow. And in the absence of any new evidence, I'd say there's a 50-50 chance that Joseph could be indicted for murder. There's nothing else we can do, right? The important thing is to get ready for the trial itself. And I'll get back to town now and concentrate on that. Goodbye, Haas. Joseph. Jeremy. I want to thank you for coming out. Not at all. It was a thing to do. They told Joseph to stay in the Ponderosa. And at this point, we'll stick right to the letter of the law. Yeah, look, uh, I, I just can't, can't figure Joe as... Look, that young Harry must have had somebody that had something against him. I, Look, if there's some way of finding out, maybe, maybe I could go out and talk to Matt. Would there be anything legal against me doing that? I see no reason why you shouldn't. You think he'll talk to you? Well, but gotta make a try. Then I think you should. Goodbye, Ben. Bye. It's gonna be all right, Joe. It's gotta be. some shooting back this way. Oh, it's a coyote. Uh, right out here in broad daylight. You get him? No, but I run him off. Matt, why don't you come on in and get some rest? You haven't eaten or slept. 
I'll try, Hayden. But I can't think of anything else except that inquest tomorrow. Well, it's, it's got to be done. Yeah. Got to be done. And then his father asked him who shot him, and Harry said, Joe Cartwright. Those were his last words. Your corroboration of the deathbed statement is now a matter of record. Thank you, Dr. Martin. There is one additional witness. Ms. Millie Perkins, will you come up, please? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, you're under oath. Now, would you tell your story in your own words? The day that, that you're talking about. Well, it was Saturday and the office was closed. I rented a buggy and went for a drive. Now, when you say the day we were talking about, you mean the day Harry Jeffers was killed? Go on. I drove to that pretty little green meadow that I like to go to. It's on the Jeffers Ranch. This is unexpected. I hope it doesn't mean any trouble. Miss Perkins, remember, you are under oath. Go on. I was riding along that road dividing the Ponderosa from the Jeffers Ranch when I saw Joe Cartwright riding down a slope. He stopped, and then I saw him draw his rifle and fire. And all of a sudden, he turned his horse and rode off. Now, you heard Joe Cartwright's testimony. He mentioned hearing a shot. Did you hear any shot other than the one he fired? No, I didn't. Joe Cartwright was out there. Okay. This may not be a court of law, but it is a coroner's inquest. And I'll either have quiet or I'll have the sheriff clear the room. Oh, Miss Perkins, what did you do after that? After that, I came on back to town. Perkins, if you had this information, why didn't you say something before this? I didn't think anything of it until Ed Phillips showed me where Harry Jeffers was killed. And I realized that it must be Joe Cartwright's bullet that hit him. He must have seen Harry fall, but he just rode off and left him lying there. Ben Cartwright. You don't have to steal my ranch. I'll give it to you. No. But I don't want That's more room in the car. Enough. All I want to do is see that murdering son of yours hang. I'm Jeffers. You be quiet about it. You sit. I have warned you for the last time. I declare this inquest in recess, and when we reconvene in 15 minutes, you'll either conduct yourselves in a manner befitting the occasion, or I'll hold you all in contempt, and I have the authority to do so. Sit down. Got to talk to you. Let's get away from here. Come on. Come on. I can't figure out why she's lying. She couldn't have seen me fire the rifle. I didn't even fire it in the same direction that Ed said he found Harry's body. Matt, you got to listen to me. What you just said in there about giving him your land, that's all he wants. That's all Ben Cartwright ever wanted. Matt, look, look. There's $640. It's every cent I got in this world. You take it. You take it and you pay off Ben Cartwright. I'd rather spend my last cent buying a worthless piece of land than let Ben Cartwright have it. Thank you, Ed. Cartwright, where's the money you loaned me? I owe you nothing more. But you owe me for the life of my son. And you'll pay me with the life of yours. This inquest will come to order. Miss Perkins, will you please return to the witness chair? You're still under oath. Now, do you have anything to add to what you've already told us? No, I told everything. Very well, you're excused from the witness chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Avery, uh, with your permission, before the witness leaves, may I ask her a, a question? 
You may, if the question is pertinent. I believe it is. Perkins, you uh, testified that you rented a buggy on that, on that day. Yes, that's right. Would you tell us who you rented it from? Jake Johnson's livery stable. That's right, Ben. Always does rent one every time she's got a day off. I remember my wife was doing a big washing that day. Jake, I think you've answered the question. Thank you. And then you testified, I believe, that you uh, drove out to the Jeffers place to where it borders the Ponderosa in that green meadow. That's right. What is this? She's already answered those questions. What are you trying to do, Cartwright? I'm just trying to do what everybody else is trying to do, and that's to find out how this terrible thing happened. Would you mind telling us what time you returned to Virginia City? I don't know. Uh... Half past six, seven o'clock, maybe. Half past six or seven o'clock, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Jake, could you help us out here? Uh, do you know exactly what time Miss Perkins brought that buggy back to your Liberty stable? I sure can. I always look after these things. It was exactly five o'clock. Exactly five o'clock. Not 6.30 or seven o'clock, but five o'clock. That's enough of this. What's he trying to prove? Uh, According to the uh, record, Mr. Avery, uh, what time did the shooting take place? 3.30 in the afternoon. 3.30 in the afternoon. And you did say that you were a witness to that shooting? Yes. And you saw the shooting at 3.30, and according to Jake, you were back in Virginia City at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Why don't you quit badgering her, Cartwright? You don't have to answer him, Millie. He's just trying to rattle you. Mr. Avery, I would like an answer to this question. Answer the question, Miss Perkins. Well, I told you, I don't remember what time it was. How would I know? Leave her alone. What's the matter, Ed? Don't you want the truth? She's already told the truth. Be quiet, Ed. Well, he's just leading her on, trying to get her mixed up. Go on, Mr. Cartwright. Matt, you heard Miss Perkins testify that she was a witness to the shooting at 3.30 in the afternoon. And you heard Jake tell us that she returned the buggy to him at... Five in the afternoon. Now, you've ridden out from your place to Virginia City maybe hundreds of times. How long does it take you? Two hours on a fast horse and a lot longer in a buggy. That's right, Matt. Two hours on a fast horse and a lot longer in a buggy. And if she saw the shooting at 3.30 and was back in Virginia City by 5... That's right, Matt. It took her an hour and a half to get back in that buggy. She never saw that shooting, Ed. She's lying. She's not lying. You all heard her. You're mistaken, Jake. How could I make a mistake? I get paid by the hour. I got it all down in my record book. It was exactly five o'clock. Miss Perkins, do you wish to reconsider any of your statements? Otherwise, I must warn you, I consider the possibility of perjury. It wasn't my fault. Ed Phillips... Uh... Billy! Billy, you don't know what you're saying. She's, she's all mixed up. Ed Phillips threatened me if I didn't lie for him. She's lying! <laughs> Millie, Millie, you don't know what you're saying. Don't blame me, Ed Phillips. You were trying to keep Matt Jeffers from making a deal with the Cartwrights. That's why you killed Harry Jeffers. Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, why? I had it. I had the ranch, Millie. Cartwright. And you're in a lot of trouble. Put it back here. Matt. Matt, I didn't mean to kill him. I just wanted the land, Matt. Man, without land, ain't nothing. Why didn't you speak up, Ed? Why didn't you speak up? I owed you for back wages. I owed you for ten years of loyalty. I didn't want to give you half of nothing. 
After we had water, I was going to make your partner. Come on in. I didn't want to bleed. I understand. We all do, Matt. Like I said the other day, there's no one we'd rather have as a neighbor than you. Thank you, Ben. I, I know. But with Harry gone, it's... Well, seems to me like he'd want you to go back and build up the ranch, Mr. Chevers. Could be a fine ranch. Did you say could be, Matt? It will be. Now, come on, we got ourselves a, a water channel to finish. Let's go. Don't you think somebody with experience ought to steal those horses, like maybe Samson here? I give the orders. I expect them to be obeyed. But I know the car rights. If I get... I gave you an order, Benson. Now carry it out or face court-martial. Hear something? Hmm? What am I supposed to hear? I just heard the gate squeak. Go after those horses, Captain. Send Vanson after another one. Yes, sir, General. Did you lock the corral when you. You couldn't hear anything over that snoring. I'll go check it. Seen him before? No, I never have. See anything? No, it's too dark. If there's any of them left, they sure scattered. Uh, well, let's get this one as a town. Settle up the horses. Yes, sir. What do you figure they'll do to Samson? I'll put him in jail. We'll get him out. And when we do, Virginia City will have reason to remember Napoleon. It might go a lot easier with you, boy, if you told us who was with you. You and everybody else are going to be sorry you ever saw me. I got friends who are going to bust me out of here. I'm telling you here and now, start talking. I done my talking. You're going to get your town tore up. It's 
It's no use, Ben. I'm not going to get a thing out of him. I wrote the sheriffs in adjoining counties. I might turn up something on them. Just can't figure what's eating at some of these youngsters today. It might go a lot easier with you, boy, if you told us who was with you. You and everybody else are going to be sorry you ever saw me. I got friends who are going to bust me out of here. I'm telling you here and now, start talking. I done my talking. You're going to get your town tore up. Whew. It's no use, Ben. I'm not going to get a thing out of him. I wrote the sheriffs in adjoining counties. I might turn up something on them. Just can't figure what's eating at some of these youngsters today. He's barely old enough to shave. He's old enough to steal horses. He's old enough to go to jail. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, uh, let's see later. Coming out to the Ponderosa, bring some horses for me. I've got other things to do. Daddy, where are your manners? So long, Mr. Carter. Ben, I'm so sorry. I just don't know what to do with that boy. He's changed. He's never around anymore. He used to help me out over at the store all the time, but well, lately he's. Ben, you understand, boys. I wish you could talk to him. He misses his father so much. Well, so do I. We all do, Grace. He was a good friend. But, Donnie, I... <laughs> it's one thing to raise three sons of your own. It's another to... You know, talk to somebody else's son. I... I... I tell you what you do. Why don't you bring him out with you Friday night to the uh, school benefit social at the Ponderosa? Well, I... Well, you are coming now, aren't you? I mean, what, what would we do without one of your famous chocolate cakes? <laughs> <laughs> of course, Ben. I wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. Good. <laughs> well, I'd better be going now. I have to open up the store. See you Friday. Bonaparte was considered the greatest strategist and natural commander of all time. And that's the way we're going to run this army. Just the way Napoleon would have run it. You planned things last night, Napoleon. They didn't go too good. You're wrong, J.W. It was a training mission. Do you know what blooding the troops means? Put them under fire. Watch how they react. That's what I was doing last night. Samson got caught. We'll get him out. You're late, Private Benson. I had to help my mother at the store. What kind of an excuse is that? You know your way around Virginia City pretty well, don't you? Yes, sir. I lived there all my life. The rest of us aren't known over there. And I don't want us to be. Not just yet. Could you get me the layout to the jail? Sure I could, Napoleon. All right. Let's see exactly what kind of a spy you'd make. Exactly what happened in Virginia City today? Nothing special. Most everybody's getting ready for that big benefit social out at the Ponderosa Friday night. And Ben Cartwright was in at the jail, but Samson didn't talk. Of course Samson didn't talk. He's a soldier. And I'm going to give you a chance to be one. I want daily reports. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I'm not going to hold any more meetings here. That drunken uncle of mine is beginning to ask too many questions. You'll never meet me in the same place twice. You understand? Benefit social, huh? And we've already had a chance to look around the Ponderosa. 
I don't know, Napoleon. We've never tackled anything like the Cartwrights before. You've got it wrong, J.W. The Cartwrights have never tackled anything like us before. Now scatter, men. I don't want any two of you seen at the same time, together. My uncle's coming back here in a few minutes. If you two are going to get here. Hello, Ben. We had a last-minute rush of business at the store. Oh, Ben, the place looks just beautiful. Doesn't it, Donnie? Yeah, it looks all right. Uh, Grace, if I know boys, and I think I do, at least I ought to, I think that table back there, the one with the food, is the one that's going to interest Donnie most. Donnie, how about coming over there with me? We'll have something to eat. It's enough for everybody. Let me take that beautiful chocolate cake. <laughs> Mmm, boy, that looks good. Mm, that's right. good. <laughs> You're as bad as Donnie. Oh, it's good. Hey, Donnie. Think uh, that uh, you and I could finish this just by ourselves? I don't like cake that much. Grace, let's have some punch, huh? Oh, yes. Donnie's going to be all right. Now, stop worrying about him. Ben, I wish you could talk to him. Look, you're here to have a good time, so have a good time. This is a marvelous idea of yours, raising money for the school this way. Well, I think by the time we have a big meeting at the town hall, we'll have reached your objective. Grace, will you excuse me? I see the sheriff wants to see me. I don't think I'm not in trouble. <laughs> Good time. What's on your mind, Clem? Well, I thought you might like to know I got a report on that horse thief you caught. Well, oh, that's fast work. All right, what'd you find out? Well, not the first time he's been picked up. Been in trouble in Carson City. Always runs with a gang from Gold Hill. Gold Hill. I heard there's a pretty rough gang of kids over there. As long as they stay on their own side of the divide, not much I can do about it. This, uh, this fellow Samson, did, what he did, uh, was that serious? Serious enough. Going back to Carson City Monday morning to stand trial. I believe that boy's going to prison. Oh. Young fellow like that, too. Well, I see you're sampling the food. Don't forget to leave your donation. All right, men. You've been trained thoroughly for this mission. The key to our success is speed and surprise. Rip. I get the guns. J.W. I get the cash box. Fritz. I get guns, too. The rest of you men know your assignments. See that you carry them out. We attack simultaneously on my command. Operation Australitz. Where you go be, Napoleon? At my command post. All right, put on your mask and move out. Donnie? How's it going? Having a good time? Yeah, I guess so. You know, you and I, uh, we ought to have a long talk one of these days. What about? Hmm? Nothing in particular. Just that your father and I, we were close friends. I know it seems to me that a fellow needs a man to visit with sometime. That's all. My mother's been talking to you about me, hasn't she? Was it? Yes. Yes, she has, Donnie. Well, listen, you tell her to quit worrying because there's nothing wrong. <laughs> Sorry. 
How much is he? Two dollars. Try to steal horse. Little boy break up social in China. Little boy have respect for elder. Should be same thing here. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Hey, Clem, come Hi, on Joe. in. Joe, how you doing? Man, hot thing, hot. Clem, good to see you. Your timing's not too good. We just finished eating, but. Hopsink can rush up some oh, food. Oh, no, I don't want anything to eat. Listen, Ben, I took a ride over Gold Hill to right. just check, see what I can find out about that gang kids been raising such a ruckus mm -hmm. over there. I ran into some kind of strange story. Uh huh? The leader of this outfit calls himself Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon? That's right. The gang's his army, he drills them, figures out every single move he's gonna make. Well, that bunch of kids that was over here sure had things planned out, didn't they? Well, that's what I figured. They stole the donation money and six guns. Now, he lives with an old duffer. He, he used to be a professor. That mean anything to you? Say, there was a fella here about a month ago. Spent a couple of hours with me right here. He was a professor from back east. Lives around here somewhere. You know where it is? Yeah, I think You so. think you can find a place? Oh, sure. Well, let you and I go and have a talk with him. See you later. It's good to see you again. Oh, well, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, it's very good to see you. Clem Foster, Sheriff, Virginia City. Very happy to know you, Sheriff. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, I have been planning to pay another visit, but uh, my research has kept me pretty much tied to my desk. What, what kind of research are you doing? Uh, history, Mr. Cartwright. History. <clears throat> Even before I was a professor at Harvard University. <clears throat> um, excuse me for a, a moment, please. A medicinal, I've felt a cold coming on. Uh, would you gentlemen care to join me? Well, no, no, thanks. Thank you. Those were happy days at Harvard. All those eager young minds thirsting for knowledge. Oh, I forget myself. Surely 
You didn't come by to listen to an old man prattle on about the past. As a matter of fact, we came to ask you about a young man. Napoleon, I think he calls himself. Yes, Napoleon. His real name is Ted Arsenault. He's my nephew. He's an avid student of the Napoleonic Wars. And that explains his nickname. C could you tell us where we might find him? Oh, he comes and he goes. That's the way it should be. I believe in complete freedom for young people, don't you? I interesting boy. Interesting. I brought him out here with me when I contracted a common human ailment. Greed. I uh, thought I was going to make a fortune mining silver. In instead, well, no matter. Uh, now, about the boy. Brilliant mind. Uh, brilliant. He's a perfect student. Uh, why do you uh, want to see my nephew? Is there anything wrong? Well, I, I just want to talk to him as all. Oh. Well, he comes and go goes, but when I see him, I'll tell him. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Napoleon. That's a strong name. That's why he likes it, gives him a sense of power. That boy will go far, no matter what he chooses for his life's work. He'll be a success at it. And I heard the sheriff say they're going to move Samson to Carson City next Monday morning. Very well. What else? Well, Samson's in the first cell on the left. And the sheriff goes to lunch at 12. And sometimes he leaves the deputy, sometimes he just locks the door. What about the keys to the cells? Well, they're hanging by a ring just inside the door. Very good, Private Benson. Before long, every man will be armed and qualified to use his weapon. Do some practicing, Private Benson. When you can show me that you know how to shoot, I'll see that you get a horse. the gun? Well, in at the store. Mom said I could practice with it. Mind if I have a look at it? Sure. Doesn't look like a very new gun to me. It's pretty well used. Now, you didn't get this at the store, did you? Uh, no, sir. I, I found it. I, I was afraid you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Maybe we better take this back to town and find out who lost it. I was just practicing with it. How'd you get out here? I, I thought I'd take a walk out here by myself for a while, that's all. Well, I'm going back to town. Mount up, I'll give you a ride back. Yes, sir. Woo! Woo, woo. Woo, woo. Woo. Hey, how you doing, Pa? You picked up a stray. How you doing, Donnie? 
Yeah, big Donnie up a ways out of town. Uh, how's everything going? Uh, just fine, fine. Picked up the mail, got all the papers straightened out. How long are you going to be in town? Oh, about an hour or so. Why? Good deal. I'll wait for you. Ride back home with you. Fine. Where'll you be? I'll find my horse. All right. Donnie, Ben. Clem. Uh, Donnie here found a gun near the Black Rock cutout, wasn't it? And he uh, wanted to bring it in here. You found this? Yes, sir. Just like Mr. Carwright said. It could be one of those stolen at the Ponderosa. I'll check into it. Owner always recognizes his own gun. And Donnie, thanks a lot for bringing it in. Sure. Can I go now? Certainly, as far as I'm concerned. All right, Ben, what's the rest of the story? Oh, well, I was just uh, riding along right near that cutoff, and I heard some shooting, so I went over to investigate. Uh huh. And uh, Donnie was there, and he was practicing with that gun. You think he found this? Oh, I don't know, Clem. I know his mother's worried about him. Yeah, I suppose I'll have to tell her. You know, Ben, that's part of this job. They don't say anything about when they put your name on the ballot. Fine, Ben. Thank you for coming in. Well, I'll get your order out as soon as I can. Thank you. I'll see you soon, Greg. Donnie? Donnie, come here a minute, please. I'd like to talk to you. What about? Donnie, you know how I feel about guns. Whether you found that gun Why or that did... Ben Cartwright couldn't wait to get over here and tell you all about it, could he? Ben Cartwright had nothing to do with it. Clem Foster told me about the gun. Well, he had to. It's part of his duty. You know, I don't know why everybody's got to be sticking their nose into my business. I found a gun and I shot it a few times. Is that such a crime? Nobody said it was a crime, Donnie. But I just don't like you fooling around with guns. You just don't like anything I do, do you? Well, I'm sick and tired of being treated like a two-year-old. Now, will you leave me alone? The military organization is based on a chain of command for a very good reason. Any man, including myself, may be a casualty. The general knows he may have to die. But in dying, he never really loses command. Hey, you really believe all that stuff you read, don't you? I not only believe it, I live by it. You mean you'd be ready to die for all of us? Naturally. You're my troops, and I'm your commander. Here comes our spy. You missed a very good lesson, Private Benson. But I'm glad you're here anyway. What's your intelligence report? Nothing special. Nothing special? I saw Cartwright right up. I saw him take that gun away from you. What happened? Ben Cartwright turned the gun over to the sheriff. I told him I found it. Those Cartwrights are starting to get in the way quite a bit. It's Joe Cartwright's fault that Samson's in jail. And now Ben Cartwright takes a gun away from one of our troops. Was the old man the only Cartwright in town? No, I... Joe was there, too. I heard him say they were going to ride back to the ranch together. That's very interesting. All right, men. Operation Yena. Operation Yena? What's that? You'll find out. J.W., move out. There'll be no shooting. So leave your guns here at the command post. We don't want a murder charge on us. Not yet. You Mr. Cartwright? You're not House Cartwright. How you tell? 
Mr. Hoss over by barn. Mr. Carright, come quick. I need help. What's, what's wrong, buddy? What's happened? A bunch of us kids were racing, and one of the boys fell off. He's hurt bad. I think it's his back. Just calm down. I'll be right with you. We'll do what we can. Division across the draw. Attack on my command! He's right down there. We're on that bend. Strategy pays off. Just like the Battle of Jena, catching the enemy completely by surprise. Third Division, attack! <laughs> That story about Napoleon sounds almost unbelievable. I know it does, but it's true. Now, Clem feels it. Oh. Isn't that your brother's horse? Yeah, it looks like Chubb. What's he doing here? I thought he was working at the house. Down to the same bunch of boys. This is not work of little boy. This is work of madman. It is well planned. Why? I'm going over to the professor's shack and ring it out of him one way or another where this Napoleon is. Let me go with you. Oh, you better stay right here, young fella. How do you feel, son? Oh, I'll be all right, Paul. Be up, madam, in a day or two. No, oh, no, no. My boy Ted wouldn't do a thing like that. You have no proof that he had any part in it at all. You told me you know the one I've got locked in now, Samson. 
Yes, yes. He comes here often. He's my boy's closest friend. All right, then. The least you can do is come to town with me and talk to him. You can do that much. Maybe you can get it out of him. What's been going on? This Ted Arsenault of yours hasn't been involved. I'd be just as happy as you about it. I have always trusted Ted. He is an excellent student and a fine boy. If I were to do that, I would be betraying my trust in him. If you don't do it, you leave me no choice. I'll mount a posse and hunt him down now. Are you coming with me or not? No, Sheriff, I'm not. Oh, I know you're a good man, but I can't forget that you came here only to accuse a boy who is as close to me as a son. Good night, Sheriff. I'm afraid you made a trip for nothing. All right, Professor. Have it just your way. beginning to worry about you. I asked you who that was. Sit down, boy. Sit down. I want to talk to you for a moment. I can hear standing up. Now you're going to tell me or not? It was the sheriff uh, from Virginia City. That's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, those lawmen are all alike. Just because some kids want to have a little fun. I told him that's what it was, said. I knew that's what it was. I knew you wouldn't be involved in anything like raiding a, a school benefit or beating a man. You wouldn't, would you, Ted? Why don't you crawl back in your bottle where you belong and leave me alone? I just wanted you to know, if you ever did get in any kind of trouble, I'd want you to come to me because I'm here to help you. No matter what the trouble was, I want you to talk to me. And who wants to talk to an old drunk like you? Chad? Chad, Chad, boy, come back. Trying to be reasonable. Donnie just flared up. He hasn't been home all night, Sheriff. Go ahead, Sheriff. Go chase after little lost boys. Maybe it'll save your neck when my friends come to get me out. Pipe down in there. Oh, what's the matter, Sheriff? Getting nervous? Grace, I'll do everything I can. Now, there has to be an answer to this, and until we get it, just stop worrying yourself to death. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, oh, Grace. Grace, I'm glad we ran into you. We were going to stop by the store to see if you'd sit with us at the school board meeting. Ben, Clem told me what happened to Hoss. If I thought Donnie had anything to do with that, I... No reason to believe that Donnie had anything to do with it. He ran off yesterday afternoon. He hasn't come back. Oh, oh Clem, uh, excuse me. I want to ask you something. Anybody see anything of him? Nobody's turned up yet. You hear anything from Samson? Did you get anything out of him? Not a word, and I don't think I'm going to, Ben. Well, I better get along to that meeting. You know the plan. We've been through it a dozen times. The minute that town hall bell starts ringing, we move. We'll get the rifles first. Rifles? You didn't say anything to me about any rifles. Where are we going to get them? In case you forgot, Private Benson, your mother's store is full of rifles. 
I'm not going to rob from my own mother. You don't have to. All you have to do is let us in. I won't do it. Go! You'll do it. All right, man. makes a living. It's the only way she's got. That's very touching, Benson. I know you have a key. Use it. Hey, you want your arm broke? <laughs> Go ahead, Donnie. I'll break it if you don't. I know he will. <laughs> oh, all right. Now, please. Let me go. I don't want to have anything more to do with this. Let you go and tell the sheriff? I don't think so. I won't let you do it! Grab him! Grab him! J.W., go get some rope. Tie him up and gag him. the gun for you, Napoleon. All right, sentries. Take your positions. I'll move to my command post. One moves, get shot. My sentries are covering every inch of the street. I want your sheriff to open the jail and let my friend out. You do that, and we'll leave here quietly. Anybody crosses me up, somebody's gonna get hurt. No, sheriff, please. He's just a boy. Young man, you, you, you're going about this the wrong way. You keep your advice to yourself. All right, where's the sheriff? I can talk to him. Please let me try. All right, try. I'm backing up with this gun. Ted! Ted, listen to me. Stay out of this! You know how wrong this is, boy. All those years, we spent studying together, boy. I wasn't preparing you for this. Shut up, you drunken bum! Who's asking you? All right, get my friend out of jail, or we start shooting. I've got to stop you, son. I told you that, shut up! All right, boy. Sheriff, you're gonna walk me over to that jail and release Samson. As long as I've got your word, there'll be no shooting. Sheriff, we're gonna walk over there. You want me, you're gonna have to get him. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! No, don't shoot. He said he'd die for us, didn't he? I'm gonna give your leader here a chance to show you how much guts he's got. Gonna give him a chance you didn't give my brother. It's just gonna be him and me. Shoot! No, don't shoot.
Right, I saw you beat up an old man. Let's see how brave you are against somebody that's got a gun. Donnie was with him. You Donnie's mother? Yes. What do you know about him? Where is he? Is he all right? Yes, he's all right, ma'am. He's over in back of your store. But you better get to him. Donnie! Well, I tried to stop him from getting in, but they forced me. Donnie! Donnie, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen to him, Mr. Cartwright? Well, I guess Sam's going to go back to jail. Napoleon, as he calls himself. He'll have to go to prison. The rest of them, well, they did give themselves up. I guess they'll, well, they'll get about 30 days hard labor. I have to go with him, Mr. Cartwright. Donnie, what are you saying? I was out at the Ponderosa that night, Mr. Cartwright, and I helped trap Hawes. I didn't know he was going to be hurt, but still, I was a part of it. Don't you see, Mama? I'm as guilty as they are. I've got to pay, too. Donnie. Oh, Ben. Now, Grace, in many ways, a boy can prove himself a man. Donnie just did it his way. Thank you, I can manage. Oh, how to do, ma'am? Hello. I'm Linda Roberts. Oh, yes, Miss Roberts. I got your telegram. I have a nice room for you, second floor front. Well, that'll be just fine. Would you register, please? Yes. I don't have time to take my bag upstairs. Would you watch it for me? Well, surely. And where is the courthouse? One block down the street. That's where they're holding the inquest? Yes, ma'am. That's they good. Inquest. Thank you. Sure. 
glad that's over with. Yes, so am I. It's all been said, Ben. In there. Legal things have been said, but they're... I'm not interested. You killed my boy. No matter what a coroner's jury said, it was murder, not self-defense. You should have been held for trial and convicted. If your name weren't Cartwright, you would have been. I wanted to see you dead, Joe. to turn in, isn't it? It's getting kind of late. I don't feel much like sleeping here, Father. Keep from thinking about Mr. Crenshaw. The way he looked at me today, things he said. You must know I didn't want to shoot Zach. I did everything I could to stop it if he just hadn't drawn the gun on me. Everybody knows that, Joe. All well, the witnesses testified to it. Everybody knows it. Everybody except Zach's father. He knows it. He just can't get himself to believe it. Awful hard for a father to admit to himself that his... his son tried to kill a man. Maybe if I... if I went over and I, to and I talked to him and tried to exp explain it... <laughs> Joe, 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 listen... <laughs> There's, there's nothing you can explain. You've said everything there is to say. What Amos needs now is time. Time to think. Time to let the wound heal. Time to face the truth. To be honest with himself. Yeah, I... I guess, I guess you're right. And... What you need, young man, is some sleep. And I want you and Oz to go into town real early tomorrow and get some new men for that ditch digging, so off to bed. All right. And Joe, you did everything you could. There was nothing else you could do. Absolutely nothing. I guess I'm safe, huh? <laughs> It's a man for a ditching job. Joe Cartwright. Real live celebrity right here in Virginia City. All right, what's the joke? Little Joe, we're going to have to start looking at you in a new light. 
had no idea you were such a valuable critter. What's it all about? Well, according to this, you're worth as much dead as Jesse James. Lady wants you dead. You must have done something awful bad. Promised to marry her, maybe. And then backed out. Yeah, well, I hate to disappoint you, boys, but I'm as much in the dark about this as you are. You mind if I keep this? Go right ahead. There's plenty more of them. The little lady has them tacked up all over town. We'll be back for those beers later. Anybody do a thing like that? I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. Not without me, you ain't. Room 26, Joe. Miss Roberts is expecting you. She told me to send you right up. Come in. You, uh, you Miss Linda Roberts? I am Mr. Cartwright. As far as I know, we've never met before. I saw her yesterday out in front of the courthouse. And I saw both of you there for the first time. So you've seen me just once. This isn't a very funny joke. I can assure you that poster is no joke. Let me get this straight. You don't even know my little brother, and yet you'll pay just any you with a gun a thousand dollars to kill him? That's exactly right. Now you've learned what you came to learn. Now you can both leave. Not just yet, Miss Roberts. I want to know why you want me killed. You should know, and if you don't, you can wonder about that for as long as you live. You put a thousand dollars on my head, and you won't even tell me why. You must be out of your mind. Not at all. I'm sure you know why. I give you my word, I haven't the slightest idea. Doesn't the name Roberts mean anything to you? Billy Roberts? He was my brother and you killed him. In Carson City, June 16th at 11 o'clock at night in an alley behind the Nevada house. He didn't have a chance. His gun was still in his holster when the sheriff found him. And don't tell me you weren't there because I know differently. I'm not denying I was there. I was staying at the Nevada house. Was questioned along with 15 or 20 other men. But you were the only one who fit the description the eyewitness gave. The witness saw me at the investigation and said I wasn't the man. He said he didn't think you were. It was dark in the alley and you could hardly see. What a coincidence. You were questioned about the death of my brother and released. A month later, you were questioned and released about the killing of Zach Crenshaw. It's quite a habit with you, isn't it, Mr. Cartwright? Killing people and getting away with it. Zach Crenshaw pulled a gun on me. I had no choice. There were a dozen witnesses. A dozen witnesses bought and paid for with Cartwright money. Now get out of here. Both of you, get out. Come on, Joe. She sure has her mind made up, don't she? Yeah, she sure does. Well, don't worry about it. Nobody's gonna take that poster seriously anyhow. You sure of that, huh? No, oh, yeah, the whole thing's silly, Joe. A thousand dollar reward on that poster. People are pretty silly for a thousand dollars. See if we can hire the men for that ditching job. Coming down the street, if you hear any minute. Bartender, put this on the back bar. Look, I don't want any trouble in here, mister. Then do as I say.
Take those two beers now, Brown. He uh, made me put it up, Hoss. They went tearing out of here to see the lady. They came back meaner than a pair of rattlesnakes. Yeah, it begins to look like the lady's got a case. That poster must mean what it says. Well, if she's willing to pay a thousand dollars, he must have hurt her bad enough to deserve killing. How about that, Joe? What did you do to the little lady? <laughs> he ain't talking, Jim. He's too ashamed to tell us. I figure that's proof enough. It's time somebody did something about you, Cartwright. And I'm just a man for the job. Doing this for Miss Roberts or for the money? Both. Not often a man gets a chance to do a lady a good turn and get paid besides. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but it takes two to make a gunfight. I'm not interested. Only when you can draw on a boy who hasn't got a chance. Come on, Joe, let's go. Come on. You draw or crawl, or every time you leave the Ponderosa, I'm going to give you a beating until you're mad enough to face me. Shot in rock salt. The first man who makes a fight move, he'd stand up for a month now. What's going on here? This fella here was trying to collect a thousand dollar reward. Are you serious? That's what the man said. I was just on my way to see you about that woman putting them posters up all over town. I didn't figure she'd get any takers so soon. Get his gun. His too. All right, let's go. Still think those posters are silly? Your head, friend. Thanks. I'll give those two 24 hours in the cell and 20 minutes to leave town. Shouldn't have any more trouble with them. And I'll go over to the hotel and have a talk with Miss Roberts. I'll go with you. Joe. Look, maybe we ought to get on back to Ponderosa. Paul's going to be worried about us anyhow. We haven't hired the men for the ditching crew yet. I'll take care of that, Joe. You going home. Hey, what do you want me to do then? Hide under the bed? Ah, oh, Joe, just hold on. Hoss is right. There might be a couple other drifters around town, like those two I just locked up. No use looking for trouble. Give me a little time. I'll get this thing straightened out. Look, Joe, you do what Clem says. I'll hire the men. I'll take care of everything here. You go. Hoss, make sure he stays out of town till this thing simmers down. I'll let your pa know when. Thank you, Clem. I'd like to put some money in the safe, please. Certainly, Miss Roberts. It's Linda Roberts. Yes. What can I do for you, Sheriff? Well, I, uh, been finding these all over town. Did you tack them up? Yes, I did. Why? I don't think that concerns you, Sheriff. Well, I do. These posters incite to murder, ma'am. That's uh, against law. Incite to murder? You're quite wrong. That poster specifies a fair fight. A fair fight in self-defense. That's what a coroner's jury said yesterday. Now, wait a minute. Self-defense is no crime, and the only thing you can charge me with is inciting someone to protect his own life. I'm afraid it goes a lot deeper than that, but I'm not going to stand here and argue the law with you, ma'am. We got us a prosecutor, and town's paid to do that. It's been nice, Sheriff. My key, please. Well, you won't be needing your key. You're going with me. I'll lock you up. On what charge? Suspicion of inciting to murder. And just how long do you think you can hold me? 
Long enough to make you see a few facts and realize you're making a big mistake. After you. Joseph, Hoss and I have been talking. We agree with Clem. You better stay away from Virginia City for the next few days. Oh, but Pa, no buts. No buts. There's plenty for you to do here. You can take charge of the ditching job. And that'll keep you busy enough so you won't have time to think about other things. Well, he hired the new men. Why can't he handle because it? Because I want you to do it. All right. Listen, Hop Zane's been cleaning those pots and pans around them back there for an hour. We better get back and eat or we're going to lose a good cook. What'd you say, Hop? I said... Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Hop Zane. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Come on, come on. Hello, Joe. Ben. Hoss. Hop sing. How'd you make out with the girl? Well, I put her in a cell, made her read a complete report of the inquest. What'd she say after she read that? She said it didn't change a thing. As far as she's concerned, all the witnesses were bought off. The only thing it does is reconfirm that you're fast with a gun. She gets an idea in her head, she sticks with it, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Woman's as stubborn as a mule and twice as dangerous. Clem, is she still in jail? Yep. She, they can't post bail until the court and the prosecutor fix the amount. Now, if, uh, if we drop the charges, you have to let her out, right? Oh, well, that's right, but I... Joseph, do you think we ought to drop charges? Well, might as well. Doesn't do any good keeping her in a cell. What about the posters? Well, I took them all down, but the harm's already been done, Ben. I can't figure out. She wants me dead. Why doesn't she do it herself? Yeah, she thinks this fair play business will get the job done, keep her out of trouble to boot. Besides, I don't believe she could even fire a gun. Till a month ago, she was teaching English, deportment, and manners in a finishing school for young ladies back east. Manners. Remind me never to go back east. Supper ready, long time. Either Mr. Clem. Join for supper, or leave house so family can eat. Clem Hopper. Well, I'd like to, Ben. Thanks him. I'd sure like to, Hop Singh, but uh, I'd better be getting on my way. Oh, I sent a wire to the sheriff of Carson City explaining the problem here. He promised to wire back if anything new turns up concerning the death of Miss Roberts' brother. Thank you, Clem. Well, good night, boys. Good night, Clem. Thanks again. Joseph, let's eat. Yeah. It's about time. Jana, yeah, don't You can thank Joe Cartwright for your release. He wanted the charges dropped. I wouldn't have been so generous. I'm sure Mr. Cartwright's a very generous man. He can afford it. But you can tell him for me he isn't fooling anyone. He can't hide his guilt behind a display of generosity. Good night, Sheriff. Don't make any noise. I don't want to hurt you. Just listen. I understand you want Joe Cartwright killed, is that correct? And you're willing to pay a thousand dollars for his death, is that correct? Fine. I'll do the job for you. But I want to have the money in advance. How do I know you will take it, run away, and not do it? You want your brother's killer dead, don't you? Yes, I do. Hire me, and Joe Cartwright dies. All right, but I have to open my purse. Do it, but don't turn around.
the men up on the east section. I'll take care of the west. Supposed to be working on the ditch up on the west section? Yeah, we was just taking a little rest, that's all. When my brother hired you, didn't he tell you there was no drinking on the job? Yeah, that's right. That's what he told us. Good, I just want to make sure. I hate to fire anybody by mistake. You got a day's pay coming, pick it up at the house. You gotta have more respect for your elders, boy. I don't see any difference between a lazy old man and a lazy young one. Don't move, boy. You know, you cut me to the quick, call me and my friend here lazy. Of course, the truth of the matter is, we are. That's why we took the job. Seemed like an easy way to make a fast thousand dollars. Since we heard you weren't coming to the town, we figured the least we could do was come to see you. A lot of people know I'm out here. They know you're working here, too. You're not gonna get away with it. But we ain't gonna hide it, boy. You're gonna die in a fair fight. Luke's gonna shoot you, and they're gonna find you with your gun in your hand, right where I put it. <laughs> then I'll tell the law how you started the fight, and Luke just had to shoot. You know, I'm a good witness. All right, throw it over here, nice and easy. You two had better ride out. Don't stop for a long time. Won't be very healthy for you around Virginia City. Come on, move. Lucky thing I came along. If you hadn't, I'd have been dead now. I was on my way over to the Ponderosa. I just wanted to tell you that I know you didn't want to kill my Zack. I guess I knew it all along. I just couldn't bring myself to admit it. Well, I said it. I better get back to my place. Hey, Mr. Crenshaw, I... Look, why don't you come on over to our place? Maybe have supper right now. I know Pa would like to see you. No, thanks, so. I, I don't think so today. Started digging a new well on my place. Just to keep busy. Besides, a man has to get used to being alone. You say hello to your father for me. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, sir. Quite serious, Joe. I don't want you near any of the new men until Clem has things settled down in town. I'll take care of things around here for a few days, Joe. Thanks. You know, I think you started this whole thing just so I'd have to do your work for you. Pa, if you don't need me for the next few days, I'd, uh, I'd like to go to Mr. Crenshaw's place and give him a hand digging that well. Well, that's fine with me. If you don't think Amos wouldn't rather be alone. No. Now, if you'd have seen him today and talked to him the way I did, I think you'd agree with me. I think that's the last thing he wants, is to be left alone. Oh, fine. Tell Amos that if he needs anything, if we can help him in any way... We... He knows that already. Good enough. I think I'm going to turn in. I want to get an early start. Good night. Good night, Joe. Good night, John. You know, Paul, things have been kind of rough for Mr. Crenshaw. I have an idea that Joe's being over there might make him feel a little better. Yes, I, I hope so. I know that being there will make Joe feel better.
I'm going to start work on the new well tomorrow, Zach. I saw Joe Cartwright today. I told him I was sorry about the way I've been acting. I told him I was trying to get used to being alone. I could see he looked bad. He'll be coming around for a visit soon. Real soon. Hello, Joe. What are you doing out this way? Well, I uh, got pretty well caught up in my chores at home. I thought I might come out and give you a hand digging that well. Oh, that's mighty kind of you to take pity on an old man. I can make out all right. Yeah, well, look, it's, it's got nothing to do with pity. It's really kind of selfish on my part. You know, that trouble we had out at the ranch the other day, I thought it'd be best if I didn't go near strangers for a while. You sure that's the reason? Yeah, I'm sure. In that case, grab a shovel. It's no fun working alone. Hey, take a little rest. Let me get in there. I'd be glad to. I heard there was a little trouble in town. What's it all about? A girl named Linda Roberts. Got an idea I killed her brother because of... Because of what happened to Zach? You can say it, Joe. I learned to say it, to accept it. It doesn't do any good to pretend it didn't happen. It's no good for either one of us. I, uh, I guess you're right. I know I'm right. Now let's get in here and work together. I have a feeling we've got to go a long way down before we get what we're after. A long way. Done on the well. I wasn't thinking about the well. How did it go with Amos? It went fine with Amos. Good. Yeah, a lot better than I expected. Good. You know, what you were telling me the other night was right. You give man a little time to think. It made me feel better, too. I, I knew it wasn't my fault about Zach. No, 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 but still don't have to explain to me. I know how you feel. You feeling hungry? You bet I am. Supper's ready. Get one step. Okay. Good today, Zach. It won't be long. It won't be long, I promise you. Well, ain't deep enough yet. But it will be. It will be. Here she comes. Just came from the sheriff, Albert Carson. Figure you'd want it right away. Thanks, Pat. Kind of a surprise, ain't it? 
Yeah, it sure is. Sheriff. I think we've said all there is to say, Sheriff. Oh, I don't believe we have said it all. I just got word from Carson City concerning the man who murdered your brother. Your brother's killer has been positively identified by the eyewitness from a sketch on the front page of the Virginia City Enterprise. They get our paper a few days late in Carson. Zach Crenshaw. That's right. The man Joe Cartwright shot in self-defense, the man who killed your brother. I don't believe it. No. Here's a telegram. You read it. I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you what to say. You make sure the word spread as fast as possible that you've canceled your offer, just in case somebody's thinking of trying for that thousand dollars. Then get over to the newspaper office and have some new posters printed up, admitting your mistake. Do you realize you came close to hiring somebody to kill an innocent man? Sheriff, I've already hired a man to kill Joe Cartwright. What? I already paid a man to kill Joe Cartwright. Who is he? What's his name? I don't know. I don't even know what he looks like. You listen to me, young lady. You get to making sense and quick. I, I came in my room. It was dark, and he wouldn't let me see his face. He wanted half the money in, in advance, and I was so sure that Joe killed Billy that I gave it you to him. You were so sure. I better get out to the Ponderosa and warn the Cartwrights what's happening. I'm going to go with you. No, you're not going to go with me. I believe Joe Cartwright's had enough of you to last a lifetime. Well, you can't deny me the chance to prove that I was wrong to say that I'm sorry. All right, you can go, but we stop at the newspaper first. You have no idea who it was that you hired. I've told you everything I know, Mr. Cartwright. I'd give anything if it hadn't happened, if I... Was there anything distinctive about, uh, about the man's voice, the way he talked, the way he walked, anything at all? His voice was muffled. Other than that, nothing. I'm so sorry. Well, you're grateful for trying to help us. I was so sure. I've been so foolish. Well, Clem, it sure doesn't give us very much to go on, does it? Nope. Could be almost anyone. It could be one of those two men Mr. Crenshaw and I booted off the ranch the other day. Yes, it could be. What's this you're talking about? Oh, two of the fellas like the one in the saloon looking for easy money. I'm inclined to think that well, the news gets around that the offer has been canceled. Whoever it was took the $500 is just going to get out of town and forget it. Well, I think so, too. The Enterprise is printing up those special posters right now. They'll put the story on page one. Two or three days should be all over. But that's two or three days. Joe, I wouldn't go near any strangers or any of the new hands until then. Don't worry, I don't intend to. Well, I better take Miss Roberts back to town and get to putting up those posters. I should stop at Crenshaw's on the way back. He'll have to know about his boy sooner or later. Clem? Why don't you let me take this wire over to Mr. Crenshaw, huh? Joe, I... I think you better stay close to the Ponderosa. Well, I'm not going to run into any strangers on the way out to Mr. Crenshaw's. I've been working with him the last few days. It's going to hit him pretty hard. I think he might take a little better coming from me. How about it? Well, just as far as the Crenshaw Ranch and back, no more. Understood? Understood, don't worry. And you stop worrying. Everything's gonna be all right. If anything happens to you because of what I've done, I'll never forgive myself. Come on now. I just told you everything's going to be all right. You go 
back to town and get some sleep. You feel better tomorrow. Put in enough hours here today? Oh, yeah. Just want to come over and talk to you for a little while. Talk to me? Sure. Come on in. You want to talk to me, huh? Sure. Had your supper? No, sir, I, uh, I haven't, but I, I'm not hungry, thank you. Oh, nonsense. Grown boys are always hungry. Come on, sit down. Good beef stew, hot and ready. Oh, really, it's very, it's very kind of you, but I'm not hungry. Oh, come on, now, I mean it. We don't want that stew to get cold. There's plenty of time to talk uh, after you eat. I ain't the best cook in the world. Zack always liked my stool. Mr. Crenshaw, I... I came over here to talk to you about Zack. He was a handsome boy. Wild and free. Spirited like a fine horse. But he, he was a good boy, wasn't he, Joe? Now, you uh, eat your stew while it's hot. Zack didn't like to let his stew get cold. Mr. Crunch, I have a, a wire from Carson City I think you should read. For me? The sheriff and Carson sent it to Clem and I. Asked him if I could bring it to you. I'm sorry. Where'd you get this wire? I told you the sheriff and Carson sent it to Clem. I knew what you said. It isn't enough that you murdered my son. Now you're making up stories to make him look like he was a killer like you. You don't fool me. Not for one minute. Mr. Crenshaw, I know this is hard for you, but I... I'm not the only one you don't fool. Linda Roberts, she knows what you are. She knows you murdered her brother just like you murdered my Zack. She gave me $500 to kill you. It ain't that I wanted the money, just that I didn't want no one else doing it. All the time we've been digging that well, I've been planning on how to kill you. Mr. Crenshaw, you have to listen to me. Linda Roberts knows I did not kill her brother. She came to the ranch today and said she was sorry that she was wrong. She came out to the Ponderosa? I swear it. 
She's even printing a poster saying she knows she was wrong. Why would she give me $500 if she knew she was wrong? Because she didn't know the truth when she gave you the money. Please believe me. You ain't eating your stew, Joe. It's getting cold. Why don't, why don't you put down the gun and, and I'll eat? Sure. You, uh, you were uh, telling me about Miss Roberts. She knows she was wrong. That, that's what I was telling her. Wrong. I don't know, I remember. Yeah, your stew's cold. I'll get you some more. Zach always liked my stew. Miss Roberts, but you can't fool me. That well we've been digging is going to be your grave. My father and the sheriff know I came out here to see you. That don't matter. They think I'm your friend. I saved your life. I was going to kill you that day. That's why I was following you. But I, I had to talk to Zach first. Then I got a better idea. I got $500 from Miss Roberts. Then I let you help me so those folks would think we were friends. That wire is a lie. Tell me it's a lie. I wish I could, Amos. Such a good boy. Such a good little boy. Help me. Oh, God, help me. to go. I know I said I'm sorry so many times, but... But it's silly to say it again. You have a good trip and take care of yourself. I will. Mr. Cartwright. Bye-bye. Boss. Bye, ma'am. Lady's gonna be all right. Yes, I think so too. Just hope Amos will be all right. Well, a man learns to face the truth. He he learns to live with himself. It's gonna be hard.
Are you sure you haven't bit off more than you can chew, Ben? No, George, I don't think I've bitten off more than I can chew. <laughs> Timber cutting's right on schedule. As a matter of fact, I'm a little ahead. You see, it just doesn't make good business sense to haul that timber all the way to the sawmill and then haul it all the way back again. That's going to cost a lot of money. Yes, it is. But don't forget that army contract includes a stiff penalty clause if I don't deliver on time. And that is a lot of money, and it's lost money. It just makes a whole lot better business sense to build a new mill, right where I'm cutting the timber. Well, I'll have to take it up with the other directors. And with a loan this size, we'll have to deal direct with the San Francisco Bank. All right, George, thanks. Please, do your best to speed things up. I need that machinery in two weeks. Yeah, I understand, Ben. At the stage. You know, it's the first time in months that stage been on time. Yeah, well, you better get out there. You don't want your cousin Clarissa waiting in that hot sun. No, I don't. Now, remember, Ben, you promised me I could meet her. You'll meet her. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Benjamin. I can see why you're happy here. This is one vast, peaceful sanctuary. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's your sanctuary while you're visiting here with us. Oh, I bet you can use the rest, huh? You've done a lot of traveling. The Franklins in Ohio, John and his family in Virginia, the Wilsons in Oregon. You make me sound like a wandering way. <laughs> hey, cousin Clarissa. Welcome to the Ponderosa. You must be Joseph. Your father said in his letters that you were the impetuous one. Well, I just hope that's all he said. <laughs> hey, you two trying to keep her all to yourself? How to cousin Clarissa Howard. Your horse. <laughs> yes, sir. Hope you can stay a while. What is this, a calculated plot to acquire a housekeeper? No, no, no. You're going to be a welcome guest. <laughs> I won't be an idle guest. You wait and see. Come on, Ben. Show me the house. <laughs> Absolutely charming place. <laughs> but it could use a little redecorating. You know, I redecorated for the Lewises in Illinois. Oh. Oh, yes, 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 certainly. I remember. Where that. is it? Where is what? The kitchen. After all, a cook can't rest till she sees the kitchen. <laughs> well, oh, it... Benjamin, I'm going to have such a wonderful time cooking for you. After all, most women have only one man to care for. Now I'll have three. Oh, welcome to Pandorosa, Cousin Carissa. Oh. My name is Hop Singh, number one cook. Hop Singh is almost a member of the family. <laughs> Pretty soon I changed name to Hop Singh Cartwright. <laughs> Everybody very happy you come here. See? It's not often we have lady from east to visit. Oh, you must be hungry from trip. Oh, don't go to any trouble, just something simple. Oh, no trouble. We have liver pate, dandelion soup, Malinated lamb, roast chicken, nice green salad, ready in one hour. Well. <laughs> now, you're probably a little tired. Would you like to rest before dinner? Well, I am just a little tired. Good. Uh, Joseph, would you show Clarissa to her room? Sure thing, this way. Stay can't be longer. Well, you're welcome to stay with us as long as you like. We've got a ticket to Sacramento tomorrow. Oh, Joseph, what a lovely room. I'm glad you like it. All those horses. 
Reminds me of Cousin John's. They live in Virginia. I love Virginia. The people there are so genteel and civilized. I hope after all those fancy places, you don't, you don't find us a little too rough and ready for you. No. You have a lovely home, a cook, a family, kind of warmth and security that a casual visitor that blows in like a leaf on the wind can't change. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get some water for you for your bath, okay? Thank you, Joseph. You know, like dinner? Oh, it was very good, Hop Singh. I, I guess I was just too tired to be hungry. Uh. Hop Singh, the next time you make roast lamb, put some basil in it or rosemary. It, it makes it taste better. <laughs> oh, sure, Missy Kalisa. Brazil, a rosemary. You bet. Claire, Cousin Clarissa, you, uh, you eat like a hummingbird. <laughs> well, I guess I just don't believe in living to eat. Um, would you, uh, like a little more wine? No, no, thanks. It's very good for a domestic product. I bet you could get some French wine in San Francisco, hmm? Giorgio Russ's wine always tasted pretty good to me. <laughs> it's chilly in this altitude in the evenings. Excuse me, I'll get my shot. Oh, no, just get my shot. Oh, no, he wouldn't know where it is. Mm. I, uh, I must say I enjoyed the meal. I thought Hop Singh outdid himself. So did I, Paul, but I got a feeling that Teresa didn't enjoy it much. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, stick your foot off the table. Yeah. yeah, well, all them fancy Eastern relatives, I reckon she figures we're a little backwoodsy or something. I bet you Hop Singh's out in the kitchen now trying to figure out who Basil and Rosemary are. <laughs> I feel sorry for her, though. Kind of sad. Ever since her father died, she's been traveling around, visiting with one relative after another. Well, how come she never did stay no place permanent, Paul? Yeah, she was saying something about a uh, ticket to Sacramento. She got relatives in Sacramento? No, no. She told me about that when I picked her up in Virginia City and brought her in. She's going to settle down in uh, Sacramento. That place called Shady Rest. Now, I know what, what that is. It's where people go and they have no place of their own to live. She's kind of a young gal to be spending her life in a place like that, isn't she? Of course she is. She's too young to shut herself off in the world like that. Listen, maybe she ought to stay around here for a while. She might learn to like it. A lot of eligible bachelors in Virginia City. Uh, I thought maybe if it's all right with you two, we could talk to her. Be nice to have her around. Maybe she would stay for a while. It's fine with me. It's fine by me. I'll talk to her. Joseph? Hey, Clarissa, you're all dressed up. You going someplace? Yes, shopping. That is, if you'll hitch up the horse for me. I'll do you one better. I'll drive you in town myself. Oh, no need for that, Joseph. I'm very good with horses. Besides, I wouldn't dream of taking you away from your work. <laughs> okay, if that's what you want. If I have to do everything myself, where are that menu promised me? Clarissa, this is Harry Baker, our foreman. He's been with us so long, he thinks he owns the place. Well, if I did, I'd have me enough hired hands to finish building that sawmill. Hey, well, I hired the men yesterday, Harry, and they're going to be here this afternoon. Well, they better be. I ain't the boss's son. I can't sit on my 
hands the way you do. Sit on my hands. Well, you old coot, you haven't done a lick of work in 20 years. It hasn't been from the back of a horse. Well, you hold up your end, I'll hold up mine. Well, go get your hand held up. I gotta hitch up a buggy. Mr. Baker, just a minute, please. You're an employee here, Mr. Baker. If I ever hear you speaking to Joseph like that again, I shall have no choice but to tell Mr. Cartwright to have you discharged. Well, I see there's a new boss of the Ponderosa. Ma'am? That will be all, Mr. Baker. Teresa, I thought you'd be halfway to Virginia City by now. I would have been if I hadn't run into your foreman. Baker? What did he do? He was yelling at Joseph out there. As the older son, you should have been there to cope with him. Baker don't need no coping with. He yells at us, we yell at him. I just yell a little louder, he yells faster, that's all. That's just my point. A hired man should not yell at a Cartwright. May I help you, ma'am? Would you tell the manager that Miss Clarissa Cartwright is here? Yes. Oh, Miss Cartwright. Well, this is a great pleasure. I'm George Bristol. Ben told me you were going to visit for a few days. Benjamin has asked me to stay on indefinitely. Well, that's great news. I hope we see a lot of you. Would you please come into my office? Oh, thank you. Uh, Miss Cartwright, will you have a seat, please? Well, thank you. Ben has told me quite a lot about you. Oh? But after we've met, I realize he hasn't told me half enough. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Bristol. Well, Miss Cartwright, what can I do for you? I came in to open my account. I feel that a depositor should have complete faith in his bank, don't you, Mr. Oh, you certainly should. Therefore, I don't believe I'll put all my funds in at once. Rather, I'd like to make a token deposit of $30. All right. Here's your deposit slip. And if you'll just sign this card. Your money is quite safe, Miss Cartwright. As you know, we handle Ben's account. <laughs> oh, incidentally, would you mind telling him that I have heard from San Francisco and there will be a short delay in our transaction? I'll give him that message. I'm very surprised Benjamin isn't doing business directly with San Francisco. Well, I've always handled Ben's account. Benjamin is such a kind man. Yes. I'm sure he tries to do business with the local people as much as possible. <laughs> good day, Mr. Bristol. It's a good day. Good afternoon, ma'am. What can I do for you? Uh, I'm Clarissa Cartwright. Are you the proprietor? Oh, I sure am. Proprietor, owner, clerk, all rolled up in one. In that case, you may help me. Oh, I'd be glad to. Clarissa Cartwright, huh? You must be Ben's cousin from back east. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'm looking for some curtain material. These are very nice, but they're not exactly what I'm looking for. Well, you may order anything you like, oh. right from San Francisco. Here are the samples. Well, uh, while I'm looking at these, have you any slippers? Yeah, uh, what is your size, ma'am? Oh, they're not for me. Gentlemen's slippers. Yes, ma'am. Howdy, George. You busy? Not for you, Roy. Come in, come in. I got it all ready for you before you even ask. Here's a campaign contribution from the Virginia City Bank. Oh, gee, thanks very much. Oh, don't thank me. It's a privilege to help you get reelected. Ben Cartwright has promised to run my election campaign for me again, same as usual. Well, is he going to have time entertaining his cousin and all? I heard that she's here. Uh, have you met her? Yes, I have. Uh 
Uh, is she planning on uh, staying a while? Well, that's what I heard. Huh? Uh, I got a couple of posters here. I'd like to leave them with you. If you see your way clear, you could put them in the window. Thanks very much for this. <laughs> well, you sure know good merchandise, ma'am. With the curtain material you ordered, that comes to $268. Well, you just put that on Mr. Cartwright's account, will you? Were you sure this will be all right with Ben? Well, I don't have a cart ride, didn't I? Yes, ma'am. I'll just wrap these things up Put for this you. with it. Uh, don't forget the French burgundy I ordered, will you? You bet. I'll remember. Howdy, sir. Oh, hi, Roy. Oh, Miss Cartwright, this is Roy Coffey, the sheriff of Virginia City. This is Ben's cousin. Howdy, ma'am. I heard you was paying us a visit. It certainly is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'll pick those up in about an hour. Hope to see a lot of you. Uh, I doubt if I'll have any dealings with the law, Constable. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What was that she called you? Constable. That means sheriff in the East, I guess. Well, different places, different ways. <laughs> she sure is a fine lady. Ordered real French wine. Biggest order I've had in months. Hey, this is my lucky day. Now you'll be able to make a nice contribution to Roy Coffey's election campaign. I'll leave a couple of these posters here. You can put them in the window if you're minded. Thank you, sir. Supper lady, half hour, cousin Carissa. Oh, Hop Singh, I am not your cousin. Oh, sorry. Hop Singh, all time forget. I bought some new pots and pans. Those old ones should have been thrown away a long time ago. <laughs> it's Hop Singh's job to buy everything for kitchen. Nobody else touch kitchen. You have more than enough to do, Hop Singh. I'm glad to be of help. Fly pan is too small. Mr. Horse eat more egg than I can cook in this all by himself. Perhaps Hoss eats too much. Dinner in 45 minutes, Hop Singh. Supper in half hour. Same time as usual. <laughs> oh, your boots, Hoss. Yes, sir. What about them? They're dirty. Yes, sir. They, they generally get that way working around the ranch all the time. Yes, that's why I bought the house slippers for you to put on when you come indoors. I've had Hop Singh on his hands and knees all day, washing and waxing and polishing these floors. Yeah, it looks real nice. Much too nice for muddy boots. Yeah. Remove your boots, Hoss, please. Please. Just hold it right where you are, Joseph. Your boots. Yeah, my boots. What about them? They're dusty. They're dusty. They generally do get dusty when you work around a ranch. They're entirely too dusty to walk on this floor. Look at it. Hop Singh's been in there on his hands and knees, scrubbing, waxing, polishing all day. Well, what are you going to do? Carry me upstairs? Slippers, Joseph. They're yours. Slippers. Cousin Clarissa. That's right. Next thing you know, she's going to have us wearing ties to the dinner table. Not me, she ain't. Slippers. Tell me how nice the room looks. <laughs> I, uh, I reckon this is what Paul meant by a woman's touch, huh? It is. The room certainly needed it. i 
kind of busy, Clarissa. Well, if it makes you happy, it's been a labor of love. And I'll get the safe from there. Let's see if we can speed things up a little bit, huh? Yeah. First, I'd like to ride into Virginia City or over to the next ranch and get some breakfast. Breakfast? You just had three portions. Yeah. Porridge. Oh, I ain't had porridge since I was a kid. Whatever happened to steak and eggs, anyhow? Well, Clarissa's just trying to bury the menu. Well, good, but she's starving me to death while she's doing it. Hopsy? Yes, cousin. Missy Cartwright. I found this absolutely beautiful. Sterling silver tea service in the back room. Seems like such a shame to hide it. Everybody here drink coffee. Nobody drink tea, so I leave in back room. Well, I drink tea, and at the traditional half past three. Sure. I fix tea. Now, you be sure the water's boiling, and don't fail to preheat the pot and let it steep. You have some small cookies? Got plenty cookie left over from Little Joe birthday party. Marvelous! Oh, howdy, Miss Cartwright. Is, uh, is Ben around? Benjamin and the boys have been out all day long. Well, is there anything I can do for you? Well, no, I don't think so. I, uh, I told Ben that I'd bring some of these election posters by. He always handles my election campaign, you know. No, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. oh, won't you come in and have some tea? Well, thank you. Say, those flowers are beautiful, aren't they? You sure fix this place up? Hop sing. Sit down, won't you? Thank you, ma'am. Constable Coffee will have some tea. Coffee will have tea. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Re-elect Roy Coffee for sheriff. <laughs> That's not a very good likeness, is it? Well, most of the folks know me. Uh, they'll recognize it. <laughs> tea lie on time. Half past three. I do think tea is so civilized, don't you? Cream or sugar? Well, I don't know. I, I don't drink much tea. Oh, see, Hop Singh hasn't brought the lemon. Oh, the domestic help out in the West is deplorable, don't you think? Miss, I just want to... Don't want to cause you no bother. Uh, I am in a bit of a hurry, and if it's all the same with you, I'll, I'll just be running along. And you will tell Ben that I left the posters, please? Well, surely you don't expect Benjamin to tack up these posters, do you? Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that, generally. I can understand him getting deeply involved in state or national politics, but not on a local level. But when we talked about it the last time, he said distinctly that he wanted to handle my election campaign. Oh, I'm sure he would, if he could spare the time. But he said... I'll tell you. I'll talk to him when he returns. Hmm? You know, sometimes I think Benjamin is much too generous with his time. Maybe I'd better just hang on to these posters until after you've had a chance to discuss the matter with Benjamin. I think that would be an excellent idea. Goodbye, miss. Goodbye. Thank you, Jay. an hour earlier. You missed Constable Coffee. Oh. Oh, you mean Sheriff Coffee. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed him. I, uh... Oh, did he leave anything for me? No. I offered him some tea and we discussed his campaign for re-election. Mm. He seems like a very nice man. 
Oh, this is uh, Roy's one of the best. Uh, sorry, Mister. Something troubling you? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. That lumber contract with the army. I can't fulfill it until I get the new machinery. I can't get the machinery until the loan comes through. It hasn't come through, and time is running out on me. I just have to go in and see George Bristol again. Would you like to ride in with me tomorrow morning? Yes, and I can do some more shopping. That is, unless you think I've run up too many bills. Everything looks lovely. Yeah. We'll ride in right after breakfast. All right. Uh, Clarissa. Uh, you finish your shopping and then we'll meet you at the hotel for lunch. I like that very much. See you later, Joe. Yeah, see you later, Pa. Hey, Norm. Hi, Ben. I'm expecting a wire from Sacramento. Will you look to see if one came in? I think one came in last night for you, Ben. I'll take a look for it right now. Good. I simply had to come and see you, Mr. Bristol. Benjamin tells me he's deeply concerned about the delay, and so am I. Well, I'm doing my best. Well, it's just not enough. Benjamin is losing valuable time by dealing with such a small local bank. Are you suggesting that he could do better without me? Oh, Mr. Bristol, Benjamin is dealing with you because you're such an old friend. But I think you'll agree he's paying a great price for that friendship. Friendship? Oh, Clarissa? Well, I uh, didn't, uh, didn't know you were here. I thought you were out shopping. Well, I had a little business with Mr. Bristol, but I'll just be leaving. Oh, no, no, don't, don't move. I'll, I'll just be a moment. Uh, George? Good morning, Ben. Uh, I just got a wire from Sacramento. They have the mill machinery ready to ship, and I was wondering what you'd heard from San Francisco. George? George, I said, what did you hear from San Francisco? The loan has not been approved yet. I told you it would take time, and after all, this is only a small-town bank. George, look, you know about my army contract, the, the stiff penalty clauses, and, and, and the cancellation clause. I can't wait much longer. I understand your problem. However, perhaps it would be better if you handled it yourself. Uh, Clarissa, perhaps it might be better if you uh, finish your shopping now, and I'll meet you back at the hotel. I want to talk to George. Uh, moment. Oh. Uh, that won't be necessary. There's nothing more to be said. Uh, George, I, I don't know why you've got your back up like this. If you don't mind, I have work to do. I just don't understand that, George. Sometimes I get so danged up that I can't even reason with them. Get my own loan. Oh, I'll just finish my shopping. Oh, Roy. Yes, yeah, sir. Ben, hi. Roy, and Clarissa told me you came by yesterday. I thought you were going to leave some of those posters for me. What, with the mill you're building, I figured that uh, you'd be much too busy to get mixed up in local politics. Well, I don't even know if I'm going to be building a mill, but I've been running your campaigns before. Don't you want me to run this one? Thanks, just the same, but I just couldn't take your valuable time. Well, my time's valuable, too. Ah, uh, what can I do to help? Roy? What's the matter with you? You know, you're, you're as... You're as grumpy as a grizzly with a sore paw. 
I told you I was going to run your campaign. I'm going to. Well, I thought you were all tied up with the mill. Well, I am tied up with the mill. But I've built mills before, and I'll build them again. That doesn't mean I'm so tied up I can't help you. Ben's right. Yeah, I guess he is. A little plain talk usually straightens things out. Pity more people don't know that. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what are you fellas doing here? I thought you were working up the North Range. Well, you thought wrong, Mr. Cartwright. Me and the boys decided to come into town and have ourselves a drink. Oh, really? Yeah, well, that's fine with me, but if Pa finds out about it, you'll be able to find yourself without a job. Mm, well, he's going to be a mite late. Because in case you didn't hear, we quit. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean you quit? Quit! When some female comes into the men's bunkhouse, hangs up curtains, pours out all our whiskey, and then starts ordering my men around, I am through. Through. Yeah, Roy Coffee was no problem. I just talked to him and straightened things out with him. And Baker, well, you know, any times he's blowing up and quit, I can, I can talk to him, but... Mr. George Bristol. Well, that's a horse of another color. He just froze up completely. Did you ask him why? <laughs> when Mr. George Bristol freezes up, he's harder to get to than the gold in the Denver Mint. Well, how come it turn against you all of a sudden, Paul? It must have been Clarissa. She was sitting in the office when I walked in. She sure has the knack of saying the wrong thing at the right time. She sure does. She sure gets under my skin. Hop Singh ain't been the same, neither. Oh, she... She doesn't do it deliberately, she just does it. Well, Paul, in that case, how come the relatives keep asking her to come and stay with them all the time? Because they need her. They use her. Anytime they need somebody to take care of the baby, take care of the house, do the house cleaning, the cooking, and there's no help in the house, they send for good old Clarissa, and she goes. Because she has to. The only way she can pay for her keep has nothing but her pride. <laughs> Took care of her father long enough until the day he died and left her with nothing and an old maid. How do you think the relatives are really using Clarissa? What's that supposed to mean? I just like when she came here. We didn't ask her to be the maid, the housekeeper, the cook. That was all her idea. Maybe she's done exactly the same thing with the rest of the relatives. That's right. Well, may have something there. But well, she just likes to keep busy. <laughs> I'll tell her to stop running our lives. When? Hmm? When will you talk to her? Soon, I'll talk to her tomorrow. How about now? Still early. It's Ben, Clarissa. May I come in? Of course, Benjamin. You know, I've been lying here thinking about this house. Everybody's so good to me. The warmth, Benjamin. The love. I envy you the way you love each other. Well, we... we managed to stick together. We always have. I can see it, I know. Three against the world. Oh, well, no, 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 not, not, not exactly. Uh, uh, Clarissa, it's, it's not, uh, not three against the world. It's... You see, we have many good friends and neighbors and, and people who help us along the way all the time. And uh, uh, it's really what I... Um, Wanted to discuss, uh, wanted to talk to you about. Yes, Benjamin. I, I know that you have, uh, you've traveled a, a great deal, met many people, but I'll bet you that people out here are much more sensitive than the people in the East. Now, I know they look hard and, and the, their hands are all gnarled from, from hard work, but their, their feelings are, are very close to the surface. They're very easily 
to hurt. Are you scolding me? Oh, no, no, of course not. It's, it's not for... I, I was really just wondering whether whether you had said anything to uh, uh, George Bristol that, that uh, well, that he might have misunderstood. Oh, Benjamin. You worry about the most unimportant things. Well, he's just the local banker. And besides, you yourself said he had a closed mind now, didn't you? Well, uh, yes, yes, I, I, I did. Uh, but but uh, now, <clears throat> my, my, my foreman, uh, Harry, and, and, and the, 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 the two hands had just walked off with him. Oh, three. That's not such a loss. You see, these, these people, they, uh, they don't understand that... Uh... Are you trying to tell me that I've worn out my welcome? No, Clarissa, we, we all want you to be very happy here. Oh, I am happy. Everything's absolutely marvelous. Good. But you can't expect me to just sit around like a piece of furniture and not have an opinion. Well, well, of course not, Clarissa. No one would ever expect that. You can't be denied that. But I've offended your friends. It, oh, it, Benjamin, it, it, if it, I'm it, coming between you and your friends, then I shall simply have to leave here. Oh, wait a minute, Clarissa. No, no, please, Clarissa. No, I, I didn't come in here for any reason like that. No, you, you, I had no intention of even suggesting such a thing. Well, if I stay, I've got to be useful. Well, of course you do, Clarissa. A woman needs to be needed, Benjamin. Certainly. That's the most important thing in her life. Oh, Clarissa, of course it is. Of course it is. Now, Clarissa, you, you must promise me something. Now, you, you must put out of your mind any thought of leaving here. Now, you, you must do that now. Yes, I will, Benjamin. Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you. Now, I, I know you, you, you must be tired. And, well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you and we'll, we'll see you in the morning. Yes. Good night. Good night. Make up. Uh, well, she uh, she wanted to leave. Whew. Is she going to? Uh, no. Uh, I, I talked her out of it. Right, you haven't met my wife, Elvira. How do you do? My, you must be happy to be settled down after all your wanderings. Did Benjamin tell you I was a gypsy? No. It was Emily Durker. Emily Durker? She works in the post office. She mentioned how your letters to Ben always had a lot of different return addresses. Well, I have a very large family, Mrs. Peterson, and I love them very dearly. Well, come along, Elvira. Well, let's have a sample hop sings punch. What you say? Some punch, Sherry. Thank you, ma'am. Well, what's going on here? Well, are you always having a campaign party or something? We'll soon find out. They get the horses. What? Interfering. Benjamin, surprise, surprise. Are you surprised? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am just a little surprised. Now, what is all this about? Well, last night you said I'd made trouble with your friends, and I didn't want that. So I went into town and I talked to them, and now they're all here. All your friends are here. Well, are you pleased? Well, uh, yes, Clarice, I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's very nice. It was very nice of you, Clarice. I, uh, everything looks lovely. I, uh, Better get cleaned up. Good evening, Miss Cartwright. Good evening, Mr. Bristol. Oh, joy. Well, nice to see you here. Ah, thank you. However, I'm here because Miss Cartwright extended a personal invitation. Oh, well, uh, no matter what the reason, I'm still very happy that you're here, George. 
<laughs> Why don't you get Mr. Bristol some punch, Benjamin? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, George, come along. Get some no, punch. no, no. You get it. Uh, I'll be right back. Oh, uh, cookies are good. Won't see a case. Clarissa's idea for patching things up. I gotta get this punch to George. Oh, what's the big hurry? I don't want Clarissa to have a chance to say anything more to him. Oh, stop worrying. You got nothing to lose. Most of these people don't talk to you anymore anyway. Oh, Ben. Hey, that Pete Jenkins is running against me. He could get an awful lot more votes than we first figured. Uh, what would you say, Mark? Well, Pete Jenkins is going around the county and making speeches and uh, talking to folks. And from what I've been hearing, it's a very nice party, Miss Cartwright. But I'm wondering why you invited me. Well, I was hoping you'd make it up with Benjamin. Make it up? A man has to be generous, don't you think? So I thought maybe you could set up some meetings, like here in Virginia City at the town hall and some other towns in the county. My cousin Benjamin's been very good to you. Hmm? Yes, that's quite true. And I know you're grateful to be of service to him. Grateful to be of service? There. I knew you weren't too proud to recognize the obvious. I thank you for setting me straight, Miss Cartwright. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about that first thing in the morning, Roy. All right, uh, fine. Uh, uh, to George? <laughs> well, here's, here's that punch. <laughs> Not now, Ben. I'm going home. George, wait a minute now. We ain't going home. The party just started. Well, it's over as far as I'm concerned. Boy, Ooh. have some more punch. I'm going in to get cleaned up. Oh, hey, Harry. Harry. I'm glad you could make it. I want my money. Hey, now, come on. Come on. I forget that money talk. You've been with us too long for that. I ain't working for no female. Oh. You don't have to work for any female. We got that all straightened out. You can take the curtains down in the bunkhouse, and you can even keep a little whiskey in there if you want to. How's that sound? <laughs> Fine. All right, then forget about it. Go on, get some punch. Howdy, ma'am. I thought I told you no drinking for the help of the Ponderosa. Hey, Harry, where are you going? What about that punch? Hey, Harry, what the heck's this all about? Harry! Harry, what the... Harry, we get... Look, I'm, I'm sorry about that, Harry. I didn't want to hit you. Joseph, what's going on here? Beats the heck out of me, Bob. Harry, you better get on back to town and sober up. Sober up? Heck, I can't even get a drink of punch around here. I want my money, if it's all right with that female who's running the Ponderosa. Uh, Joe, get him his money. No, please. Don't go. Please, everyone, stay. Oh, I didn't want to cause any trouble. I just wanted to help. Ben, they're your friends. That's the most precious thing in the world. And I came between you. Please. Clarissa, it, it, it's all right. It... No. No, it's not all right. It's not all right until you're, you're friends again. Then it will be all right. Well, I've always been a... Doggone hothead, Mr. Cartwright, you know that. You've always been a good foreman, Harry. Joe, what are we fighting about anyway? Uh, I can't remember, Harry. And I'm sorry, Ben. I think that I could have been more tolerant. <laughs> well, Hop uh, Singh has made some cookies. I'll, I'll get them. You know, fellas, I think we could uh, stand some punch. <laughs> Mr. Carlyle, I'm leaving. I'm going back to San Francisco. <laughs> Son of a gun. She done it again. <laughs> I'll go get him, Pa. You know, Ben, I think I'm beginning to understand that lady. Really? 
Yes. Really? George, would I talk to you about something? It's a beautiful room. It's so generous of you to give it to oh, me. Oh, you like it, I'm glad. Oh, like it. I just love it. Oh, good, good. <laughs> but Benjamin... Oh, now, Clarissa, come on now. You've got to stop worrying. Now, sit down. You're an excellent bookkeeper. You know that. You'll have your own office. It'll be peaceful and quiet to be able to do all the work you want. Nobody will disturb you. Oh, I do appreciate what you're doing. But... Hold on there. It's all settled. I've already talked to George Bristol. He's delighted at the prospect. He is? Clarissa... George Bristol needs your help. He... He really needs me? Of course he does. Oh. You know, George Bristol is a very nice man, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's, uh... He's one of the best. It would be nice to be independent, wouldn't it? Now, wait a minute, Clarissa. You're not gonna get so danged independent you're not gonna come out to visit with us. Oh. Thank you, Benjamin. But it'll have to be just for a visit. I'm going to be very busy. Good. Well, I better be getting along. We'll see you soon. Yes, Benjamin, at the bank. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to have all kinds of new ideas about banking. I can't wait to tell George about them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bây giờ 
đi chơi đi theo tàu chú quá tàu mình lấy đi chơi ở đây mình mua màu này ở màu này nó là gì ấy ở đây nó không phải của ai mua lấy chị mua lấy chị mua lấy chị mua chiều chiều mình chỉ đặt ấy mà thì nó không phục bác thấy thế này cái mắt bị thì lại màu trắng nhỉ Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video của mình Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại